Yo, what's poppin' PBO people? <laughs> Back again, once again, with PBO Pickums Week 1. New guest, I think never before seen this time. I'm your host, uh, Ben, of the Alabama Alakazams. And I've got Nightmare Hall of the Abbotsford Agrons. Hello, hello. This guy really led off with the with the taboo intro. If you know, you know. <laughs> Leave it in the comments. We got it. We got to get the. If uh, you the know, you know. Up. All right. And we're here, and we're ready to do pickums for week one of Stargazer. Uh, let's get right into it. Before they start, I'm gonna cut in really quick. Hello, my name is Swarm Flying. If the tears look a bit off, don't worry. It won't look like that next week. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. And with that, we got our week one game. The first game, the Frederick Clef Keys versus the Lion City Leech Life. I think this was uh, number one in the power rankings versus, I believe, number eight. So, you know, both, you know, in the top half at least, both uh, pretty powerful teams. Uh, the Clef Keys have some, you know, really cool pieces here, I think. I think uh, Quillfish is a pretty decent mon here. It can kind of, uh, you know, deal with uh ogre pond wellspring which uh looks quite threatening but uh obviously wellspring could carry you know zen headbutt or uh, a stomping tantrum i think zarude looks really good here some sort of setup set whether that's swords dance or bulk up uh i also think like you know uh some sort of uh banded set could be pretty good here and uh take advantage of the fact that this guy's uh dark resists are like hydreigon and um palmot I think you can also take advantage of the steel resist or the steel types here and uh, click Moonblast a lot with Valiant, whether that's with a Spex or something else. Uh, Fortress doesn't want to take Moonblast, so you kind of have to run a Spadef Gold, in my opinion, in this game. But uh, on in terms of Lion City side, I think Palmot looks really good. Uh, I think like you know maybe a defensive uh, pre Terra uh, Belly Bolt might be able to handle it, and obviously Garchomp has a uh, rough skin and is immune, but uh, Palmot does get Ice Punch, and it can run the Punching Glove, which of course could be pretty annoying. Uh, I think Fortress is pretty bad, and that's the hazard removal here. So maybe Orange tries to uh, Spike Stack in some capacity, but in return, Lion City could also have Sticky Web. What are you thinking, uh, Nightmare Hall? I think... I mean, I, I agree with most of what you said, I think. I think Palmot is, like, kind of crazy. I'm surprised to see one of those matchups where you're like, wow, like, the Terra Electric Double Shock interaction that I don't know why it's like that really kind of puts Orange uh, in a chokehold for real. Um, Ice Punch, like we talked about, pretty strong. Um, yeah, I mean, I think Gold is... I mean, shit's kind of broken, no cap. Like, yeah. I think Spadef Gold is pretty good. Some Spadef Gold with, like, Recover yeah. and nasty plot and shadow ball in a fourth. Yeah, round. it's also like a good check to like Valiant in general because uh, Valiant kind of can like run over Lion City pretty nicely with like fire punch coverage and like even if you're just like uh, what is it like call mind attacking move but like a uh, neutral coverage for like Fortress it's like big damage. Yeah, uh, call mind moonblast shadow ball maybe. Yeah, it's pretty good. I think Scuff God is also pretty good this game for Lion City. Uh, just you know, punishes most things. Yeah. Uh, you could trick the Empoleon, so that, yeah, that's weird. and Belly Bolt, I think, is big. And like having either or a stab to cover uh, what the shenanigans as a root might be, that's pretty good. I do like Bandit's root, like you said. I, we, I think that's pretty shiest. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, it's like I, I think, th yeah, um. I think Orange should probably try and set up T spikes. Actually, now that I'm looking at it more, uh, Line City doesn't have a. Um, <laughs> of course, Line City doesn't have a poison type, and his yep. spinner, uh, doo doo poo poo fortress. But I mean, uh, I, looking at it, Orange also doesn't have a ghost, so I guess Fortress can uh, like die to spin, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. there is that. So it might have to be like a mid game thing, but getting a poison on Palmot could be huge. Getting spikes up in general, any chip on the Palmot, because I think Palmot is very threatening this game. You know, it's very nice to get, in my opinion. Uh, I am leaning towards Klefki's. I think, the, you know, the hazard setting is better for him, and I think uh, Valiant and Zarud are more threatening than uh, Palmot and Golden Go, even though both of them are very threatening. I think uh, Belly Bolt also could be good this game, even if it isn't Terra. I think, like, if you don't Terra the Belly Bolt, it's still a pretty decent answer to, like, a Vicavolt or, like, a uh, Palmot. Like, uh, you, you still resist the electric thing. 
Uh, close combat, I'm imagining, doesn't do half if you're uh, unless it's Terra fighting. Which if it's Terra fighting, then he can't do the double shock shenanigans. Uh, so I'm imagining it's going to be the double shock shenanigans. And I'm imagining close combat doesn't do half. I'm imagining it probably does like 45 if you're max HP, max defense. So that might be the answer. Um, Blood Moon, obviously very, very threatening. Yeah, I, it, think, I think I think that's something we kind of are kind of on the low of. I think, to be honest, that guy could just lead, so scuff uh, Blood Moon and click a move and probably get a kill. I will <laughs> say, it, uh, sneakily, Priagonal. Uh, is a pretty good Blood Moon check. It has pretty high spadef. It's immune to the ground move. And if you click Blood Moon, even if it does over half, he can just recover and you can't click Blood Move the next move. And Hyper Voice yeah, probably doesn't do over half. It's just Calm Mind. Like, if... If, if, it, if it's, like, Freeze Dry Haze Cryogonal, like, I feel like that actually techni- that checks Ursaluna Blood Moon decently okay. Yeah. Um, it's, just food, it's just food for gold. Yeah, it, it allows gold in for free. So, like, that uh, is obviously going to be... Uh, the last, you know. but yeah, I mean it's true. It, it, it's obviously you know getting gold in for free because I think gold is like I, I I do like Puma. I think gold is the biggest threat for sure, yeah, undoubtedly. Gold, Golden yeah. Go is crazy. It's a nasty, nasty Pokemon. I think it might be Colber. It might be Spidef Colber to kill the Zerud. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, I think it's possible. I think I do. I do think like whatever mid-game breaking shenanigans Puma does. Like, Ogre, it's really easy for Ogre Pond to clean these, like, games up. Like, Yeah, if Quillfish goes down early, Ogre Pond can clean up pretty well. Yeah, um, I, I, yeah. like, 1 SD, and it's like... Again, really the more I look at it, the more I'm thinking this is going to be a max HP, max defense pom- uh, belly bolt. So we'll have to see how that, yeah. uh, if that can take a hit. Yeah. But, yeah. uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I think Garchomp is also decent this game. You know, um, it's decent for... Palma, maybe Scarf Chomp, because you could then you can outspeed Palma and you can revenge Ogre Pond if it doesn't have a Trailblaze up, and you also outspeed Scarf Hydreigon. Uh, it's not perfect, obviously, but I think it has some merit at least. I wouldn't run Scale Shot because you're gonna miss. Um, you're such a hater. That's funny. I, I think, think. I think the I think the I think the final thing that I think is really relevant, if the guy wants to go about it this way, uh, Lion City. He does have webs on on Vicavolt, and so like that guy could really just put the webs up. Orange's hazard control is uh, very golden goable. Okay, I'll be honest with you guys. I don't know if fire move like if it's fire move on uh, Town Flame. I mean, yeah, I know the Town Flame would have to be like it's, like, it's gonna be. Fun, it would have it's to going be. To be fun, it would have to be Roost Defog like. Flare Blitz, Sword Stance yeah. to actually beat him. Absolutely. And so, like, it's going to be Flamethrower. That's what Orange always runs if it's defensive, which is not a bad, to be honest. Um, it's very golden gold boast. Like, that guy can just put up webs and, like, Specs Hydreigon or, like, you know what I mean? Even the dreaded Life Orb Hydreigon or whatever. Like, that thing kind of smashes on the offensive front. Yeah, and I mean, really- honestly, if it is, like, offensive Town Flame, Flare Blitz, if it, if it has Flare Blitz, Brave Bird, Sword Stance isn't horrible. Um, yeah, it, it just can't kill Ursaluna. Like, I don't even think plus two will kill Ursaluna. Yeah, no, I mean, Ursaluna is obviously so, a big problem. Um, yeah, but yeah, I think, I think, I think like, into offensive strategies. Like I mean, immediately look at the team, you, you, this is, I guess, a benefit of Ursaluna. You know what the checks are. It's either going to be Cryogonal or like a Shuka Empoleon. Those are the only options that uh, Orange has, I think. Yeah. You uh, even oh, yeah. have a chance to live. So he's going to bring one of those. Uh, I think Lion City needs to, you know, go in knowing that because those are the only Pokemon that could maybe like Assault Vest Belly Bolt could live one, but I don't think it does anything back. It'd have to soak first, and it, it just doesn't win that exchange. Um, I, I, and you can't even soak if you're Assault Vest. So yeah, it, it, it yeah, it, 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 it would be a loss in that exchange. Yeah, also, it's like Talonflame can never actually beat Swampert. Like, Swampert will just be Fizz Death. And... Yeah, no, you can't beat Swampert for sure. Which I think, which I think is going to be probably the optimal set anyway, because you want, like, a Godchop check and, like, physical Vow check anyway. Yeah, uh, but... does Swampert get Scald? It does, right? Yeah, it does. Yeah. It's and Scald, knock off. So, because I was going to say, Zarud probably comes in on Swampert, right? So, you got to flip Yeah, but it should, be, it should be Ice Beam. Like, it should be an Ice move to hit, to hit Godchop. Yeah. In my anyway, I think, I think Sticky Webs could be she iced um because yeah orange is very golden global um i'm leading like, about 65 35 in orange's favor personally what about you i think 65 is like well in his favor that's very high that's like that's you like, want to put it down to 60 40 
Yeah, or even like fifty five forty five. I you know what I'm saying? Like it's pretty like I think it's doable. Like the more I think about webs, I think webs are, is quite good. Um but that maybe I'm just delusional. But yeah, I I think that's pretty close. Yeah, I think yeah. that's true. I mean he could hazard spam and then just use golden go to block because exactly. I I, I'm I'm imagining that the the removal can't do anything. Although I really like Golden Go not just a, a, as a blocker. It does let in. I don't know. Yeah, he so might uh, Orange might have to find a way to make it so Cryogonal doesn't get absolutely stonewalled by gold because all those free gold turns are going to add up, and I think he'll lose the game if he lets it uh, yep. do that. Yep. So maybe instead of Cryogonal, it'll be Town Flame, but then and the Shuka Empoleon will come. But I feel like that's a very loose and kind of bad check to uh, Blood Moon. Either way, I would be, it should be an interesting game to watch. They got, so should be good. Yep. I'm gonna go sixty. I'm gonna go in favor of Orange. How about you? Yeah. You sound like you want to go Lion City. I'd do because I'm an Orange hater for real. But honestly, if I was a betting man, I'd probably put money on Orange. It's not playoffs. That guy does seem to perform when it's not playoffs. So it's hard to argue against that. All right, and that's what we're gonna go with. And uh, Check. I, I checked the format under draft. It doesn't look like Swamp Park gets scald. It does get flip turn, but it doesn't show scald. Okay, so. Damn. The, the Thanos snap of Pokemon took it away from us. <laughs> GG. I'll so Zarude is an okay switch in. Obviously, you can Ice Beam. No, I don't no. think I can was Zarude. Zarude's pretty anyway. fat. Skull wasn't stopping anyway with jungle healing, so it's like fine. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Moving so. on to the next game. All right, we've got the Nevada Counter Caterpies versus the Sunnyside Suicunes. Uh, this is an interesting one. I think, uh, personally, I'm of the opinion that Volcanion has a pretty good matchup here. Uh, it's really good against the top four, in my opinion. Uh, it's not Terra anymore. I believe the Avalug and the Hitmonlee are Terra uh, now, but uh, it's still very good. Well, obviously there is, you know, a vile plume there that can Terra and then uh, hopefully try and deal with the uh, Volcanion. The Volcanion can still like sludge bomb and fish for poisons and stuff like that. But it will, if it goes Terra Water, it will resist the two stabs. But that opens it up to Rillaboom, who I also think, you know, has an okay matchup here. If it's just like Banded, maybe. Uh, obviously Corviknight is here, but you can yeah. knock them off. Yeah, I, um, I think this is a pretty like doable a game for, for Sunnyside, I think. Yeah, like, there are some really good defensive pieces here. Like, Corviknight for Scizor, and, like, also Vileplume can kind of deal with Scizor once it's watered, if it's water. Uh, yeah, I think... For the, like, basically, you're going to take Tinlu, because Tinlu walls every special attacker in the game. Yeah, Tinlu's good for Pult. Yep. Take Corviknight, and, for... and then you take... Um, I assume it's going to be a Willow Pult because Tinglu is here. That's going to yeah, be my I, guess. I, that doesn't. I'll be honest. That doesn't matter. I don't think. Yeah, the I think. Is, whatever. But. Um, I think the uh, Sunnyside should try and set up hazards. If I'm being honest with Tinglu, and then bring Dusclops. Set up hazards and bring Dusclops. It'll stop Hitmonlee and it will stop Avalug. Yeah. Um, I yeah, I, I think I, I because think you could go. Because uh, Scizor could run Defog, but I think Defog on Scizor is like a real... It feels really bad because it's a wasted slot, essentially. Because usually Scizor needs Bullet Punch. It needs U-Turn. I personally like U-Turn on Scizor even if it's Swords Dance. I always run U-Turn. Um, the problem is, is that Scizor doesn't have a bug stab that's not U-Turn. So yeah, you have I mean, it to U-Turn. Yeah. It does not get bug, but it doesn't Oh, it exist. doesn't? Does it get nope. Fury Cutter? I don't know. I, I don't know, man. I'm not an in-game enthusiast. I, mean, I, I just run, yeah, Swords Dance, U-Turn, Bullet Punch, yeah. uh, Close Combat, or, like, Knock Off. But it's going to be Knock Off here for the Dust Clops. Um, yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, Corviknight just walls it. Like, Corviknight just sits on it. Like, it's going to be Fizz Death Corviknight. Walls that. Walls. Rillaboom. Uh, Rillaboom, which is really Walls good. Walls Hitmonlee. Uh, defensively, it's really, it's really strong. And then you have, yeah. like, the it, it just feels like Sunnyside has the answers here, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, it's just defensive um, ones. And then, like, because also... Then Thunder Asterion has a pretty good matchup, and the the ground is pretty frail in this matchup as well. Also, quick uh, thing: when I made this, Nevada County made a transaction. They didn't update their uh, Terra captains yet because they dropped like four Mons. And uh, and what was the Scizor question? Bug buzz. Uh, bug bite. Bug bite. Does not. It does get it. it it's in the usual. It does. Get bug it, bite. does. it does. Yeah. 
I'm getting I, I, gaslit. I'm, I'm, I'm checking under the format draft, the Gen 9 draft. So Okay. That's what I'm yeah, I think yes, I think a Terra Avalog is actually pretty likely because I'm actually looking at Cinderace too, and doesn't Cinderace like kinda own because you have to go you have to go Volcanion, and I don't think that feels very good. Yeah. because uh, Volcanion's like one of your main damage dealers, in my opinion. Um, like I, I like Volcanion's one of your main threats. It's the only it, it, it like threatens all of the top four, which is really really nice. Um, and it, it, it probably comes in on Screamtail as well because it's going to be Sludge Bomb or whatever, and uh, Screamtail's not going to have a move to hit it because it's just going to be like Mono Fairy probably. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think this is like even like AV Hoopa with like mixed Hoopa and stuff is pretty good with like Psychic Noise to stop recovery from Avalug and stuff. Dusclops, like we said, is good. Yeah, I mean, you can just, just spam Thunder's knockoff. Really Thunder's matchup is actually really crazy. So, like, like you said, so I think that's really good too. I think the only problem with like the whole hazard shenanigans is that like Sunny said has to defog or has to court change. So like, then uh, Blast Voice has rapid spin. Yeah, I, I don't know if you find space on the builder for it. You know, like maybe it's yeah. Good, Blast Voice might not come because I'm like, thinking Ting Lu, Corviknight, Cinderace. Vile Plume, Thunderous. I think those five are coming. So, uh, so six. It's probably going to be Screamtail because she doesn't oh. leave home without Screamtail. So then, then you don't have a spin blocker anyway. So your point. Is yeah. I, oh yeah. Actually, it should, it should be. Messy. It should be. It should so, be Dusclops is the anyway, sixth. Point is, there's some options. Should be very interesting. I mean. Yeah, I I, I do think Sunnyside has the answers though. Um, like I, I think Polk gets hard stuck by uh, Ting Lu. Dark, I think Dark Rye can win. I think Dark Rye if it has a nasty plot up and Ting Lu gets to fifty percent somehow, and like maybe you hit a hypnosis or something. I think Dark Rye has like a win con condition because it does outspeed everything, I believe, and uh, it can like one hit KO at plus two uh, Cinderace, and it will do like if it's Fizz Def Corv, it'll probably do eighty. So it only needs a little chip. Like, it just needs a little bit of chip here and there. Maybe if Sandy Shocks gets up rocks and like one spike, Dark Rye can kind of find a way in there. You know what I mean? I think Darkrai has like a viable way of winning this game. Um maybe like uh Sylveon because it's going to be Fizz Def Corviknight and I don't think the hoop is going to Terra, right? And I think the Vileplume is. You end up with very little fairy resists. It becomes Corviknight only. So if you're like actually a strong Sylveon and you just spam Hyper Voice, that could be annoying, especially if Sunnyside isn't carrying a steel move, which they probably aren't going to be. Because they don't really need one uh, outside of Sylveon. I don't know. What do you think? I uh, I think this game completely comes down to whatever variant of Pult he wants, and then however he wants to lev try to leverage Darkrai to break. I think he has to try. Sp I think he has to try a uh, nasty plot. I think that's the only way you can like really. Uh, yeah, sure, it absolutely has to be asked. In my opinion, I would agree. But like that that's what the game comes down to. Everything else yeah. is like does not matter. I don't think Sylveon matters. I don't think him on leave like, none of this shit matters. It's just the first two mons and then whatever they weaken for Scizor or Rillaboom or Sandy Shocks to clean. But if I was Caterpies, I would bring the first two. I would bring the Volcanion. I would probably still bring Sandy Shocks. And uh I would have Power Gem for Thunderous and I would have like Stealth Rocks and Spikes. And probably like an electric move, and not even bother with a ground move. Um, and if I was, uh, I would have Sylveon. I'd probably have those five, and then the sixth slot could probably be either Avalug, if you want to get rid of Spikes, or like Rillaboom. Rillaboom and Scizor feel really bad because they're just like giga walled by Corviknight, right? Like maybe Rillaboom could do something because it can knock it off. Because uh, I assume it's going to be Rocky Helmet. Um, yeah, that's that's my advice on the matter. But I am going to go sunny side because I think their checks are pretty good in this game. I'm going to probably go 60 40 in favor of sunny side. What I, do you I, think? I, I would agree. I think it's, it's for sure in sunny side's favor. Should be easy to play. It's, yeah. I mean, it's pretty hard to count out like gold Dragon Ball Dark Knight shenanigans, but like. All right. I think, I think it's easier to play. So, yeah. All right. That will move on to the next one. Sauda's Chimps versus the Pittsburgh Scissors. All right. This is a very odd game, uh, in my opinion, because I don't love either of these teams. I do think Kiram has a pretty decent matchup here. The Ice Spam is pretty decent. You'd have to go to um, 
either your Tauros or your Orthworm to resist the ice move. I don't think either are going to appreciate it. I think it's going to be a special Kyurem. I think it's going to be like either Specs or maybe Scarf. I think either of those sets are pretty viable. Maybe Blizzard because it's going to be getting the chilly receptions. Specs Blizzard could be very annoying. Um, I think Orthworm for Scizors is actually pretty decent this game. You know, uh, a Spideff Orthworm. He doesn't actually have a good answer. Like, Kyurem kind of gets hard uh, walled by Orthworm. If the Orthworm Spideff with rest, uh, Excadrill kind of gets hard walled by Orthworm. Maybe it needs to run, like, Brick Break. I think that's the best fighting move it gets. Um... Iron Boulder is going to have close combat, but honestly, because it's not uh, Terra fighting or anything, it's just a regular Iron Boulder, and Orthworm has like 140 defense, I would bet Spideff Orthworm still beats or uh, Iron Boulder. Whether that's, you know, if it's like Spideff Iron Defense, I could see Orthworm sweeping, if I'm being honest, which would be very, very funny. I think Orthworm is easily Scizors' best mon here, but you know, Gouging always has a chance. Uh, there, like, if it gets a Dragon Dance off, it's obviously very scary with, like, ja Dragon Ground coverage. There's not, like, a great answer to it because the Alcremie is the Fairy type. Maybe we'll get a uh, Fairy uh, Dunsparce this game. Porygon Z can do something with, like, maybe Agility and Shadow Ball and Dark, and, uh, or dark Pulse and then, like, uh, a Tri-Attack for Stab. Uh, I don't really care for any of the Terra types in this match from Scizors. I don't think any of them really matter or do anything. Like, maybe Spiritomb could be Calm Mind. I have to imagine Sada will have, like, something to answer that. Um, Iron Boulder, it's like, you know, it outspeeds Gouging and Torn, right? So, like, theoretically it does stuff. It could, like, get a Sword Stance up and be kind of problematic. There is a, you know, a Deoxys Defense, which I imagine at plus two will, uh, laugh at the iron boulder because i think iron boulder is really weak um but maybe at two eight ko's but i imagine the do uh, d probably clicks thunder wave in response so maybe it's sub stone uh muddy cleave close combat swords dance that's kind of a cool set i think um i think reggie lucky's really horrible here excadrill kind of like owns reggie lucky same with florges florges kind of gets owned by excadrill but obviously you can put tom pass wishes at least so it has some value if you bring it uh i think like the chimps probably just have an easier time here especially since orthworm in my opinion is the scissors win con and it has no sustainability unless you're running rest and if you're running rest you're you know risking some turns because like what if uh boulder comes in and gets a sub up on your rest turns uh I'm kind of, even though I don't love either side here, like, I think both teams are kind of, like, not the greatest. Like, I don't think Torn is good here. Decidueye is, like, not great. It's okay for, like, Aleki and Toad's Cruel, but, you know, it gets beat by Torn and it gets beat by Gouging, obviously. Um, Quillfish is probably pretty okay-ish if it can, like, set up a hazard or two. Uh, and a Dunsparce could probably do something. I could imagine a Dunsparce... Eh, I can't really with Orthworm there. I can't imagine a Dunsparce sweep. What do you think? I I I mean I think at the end of the day it's like Kyurem versus Gouging Fire. That's just how this is gonna like that they're the they're the two strongest parts. Um I think like you said, I think Orthworm goes like pretty hard to paint here for sure. Um but that is I think play like you can play around that with like hazards and um just like for example rotom like rotom's just gonna kind of sit on it with the exception of like body press um but it yeah. should it should be like it requires some setup before i think body press is super significant if you're not obviously tarot as rotom which is neat um I, yeah. I imagine it's gonna be like body press rest uh iron defense spadef with like last move heavy slam maybe and like that's good, but it's like no matter how good Orthworm is, at the end of the day, it's still an Orthworm. You know what I mean? It's like, so... yeah. No, I mean, I that's just how it works. I mean, I think there's like maybe not sleeper mons, but mons that like I think almost have to come would be like, I mean, I think Poyon Z is really good. I think Poyon Z like completely smashes. Um, Porygon Z is like his only form of immediate damage on the whole team. So well, I kinda... mean, there's like Torn and other things. Like, there is some stuff there. I think Florgus obviously has to come because that's his QM check. Um, 
which is good. I mean, Twenty is like the go mon ever, right? That guy's top ten, so I mean, he's gonna come. He's gonna do good damage because he has no good flying resist. You know, his flying yeah, resist. I mean, I imagine good. it's gonna be gouging, uh, torn, probably Orthworm, uh, Florgus, PZ, and then I don't know, uh, it, Dod maybe. Dod yeah. for the Boulder. I mean, it could be for sure. I think it's. I think it's pretty viable um there's probably some whack like spirit tomb set or something you know like i don't know uh, i there's yeah. probably some shenanigans at play like, but calm mind or something i, I haven't i haven't seen it yet but uh, even yeah i mean to be honest his water resists are kind of like not great especially if that wrote him terrors for no reason so maybe you just go some crazy terror water shenanigans i don't know but yeah i mean there, there should be some there should be some tech I think it'll be it'll be it'll be pretty good, um, pretty interesting. Right. Yeah. Terra Water uh, Tauros, you're saying? Yeah, I mean, he's got if he wants Decidui. Decidui is really good against that. Maybe I, I would have to see how much because I'm you're assuming banded, right? I have to yeah, assume. It, has to, it has to be some damage. I have no idea, right? Like, yeah, it, it depends on how much defense the Decidui has. It, 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 it's not a big deal. It is what yeah. it is. So it's. I, I'm gonna go chimps probably like yes. Yeah, 55 45 i don't have like a super great re maybe 65 i don't know I, I'm, I'm gonna go chimps but like I, I don't feel confident either way you know what i mean because like, if a shit can't be 65 because you gave orange 65 so uh, i'll go 55 bro i look at this shit and i'm like it's a complete mess like both sides it looks like a complete fist fight that's why i can't figure out exactly yeah, what so, to put so it's like 52 it's like like i'll just make some crazy number like i think it's like 52 it's a complete fist fight you know which i respect yeah, i'll put 55 for chimps yeah that's just I, what I'll put. yeah, yeah I, I would agree i think i think like i think curum is way easier to play um yeah. and then i, I think the curum has to be set up so that's nice like, yeah i think gouging has to be set up for it to yeah, and I think like between exactly. between like Fizdef Slokeen and Intimidate and stuff, like you should have some interaction into um gouging fire in general, so it should be should be okay. Yeah. Alright. And with that we'll move on to the next one. The Vancouver Valiants versus the Moochin Embors. All right, so this is a pretty interesting game. I think uh, Iron Bundle is really, really crazy this game. Like, ice moves are pretty free because the resists are... Uh, like, a Lantern and Greninja both get freeze-dried, and then, obviously, Ledge is weak to uh, Hydro Pump. So, like, you know, the ice resist ends up being Rev of Room, which isn't a super great ice resist, and there's no, like, major Spadef wall on this team for the Vancouver Valiants outside of, like, maybe a Lantern... It could be Max Spadef or like Wiggly Tough. So I think he's going to have a really hard time switching into Iron Bundle. But I will say, you know, his offensive pressure itself is also really, really strong. He's got a uh, great Tusk. Uh, there's really no great ground switch in outside of uh, Landorus. So, um, like, Landorus is going to have to come in. So that's a pretty easy prediction for Valiance unless Muchin decides to, um, you know, make a crazy play that turn. I think Enamorous is pretty decent this game. Like, the resist is, uh... The only resist, actually, is Bastiodon, who obviously gets Earth-powered, so, like, it's one call. I think, like, like Valiant is one call away from, like, uh, completely breaking uh, Embors in a lot of different ways. Uh, Seraledge, obviously, has, you know, always an okay chance at doing something. I think, like, if he gets the weak armor boost and a Swords Dance... It's uh, really problematic for Moochin. He doesn't have like a super great switch in. Again, probably Bastion, but obviously it gets close combat. Um, Landorus would intimidate, but it would still be plus one if it gets the Swords Dance off. I think Hydrapple is okay-ish this game. You know, uh, it it's a switch into the water move for Bundle at least. But you know, I do think like um, Dragalgy is pretty good this match, despite the triple fairy. Just because poison is uh, pretty good against uh, Vancouver, in my opinion. But uh, he can't freely spam Dracos, at least, so that's nice. Um, uh, what I know you think uh, Meloetta is good. You want to talk about that? Yeah, I mean, I think I think Meloetta has some offensive capabilities for sure this game. Um, it'd be curious to see if he w would opt what kind of set he wants, whether he wants to be like AV to like check some. Uh, I would say quite a bit of special attackers from from Valiance. It could be Calm Mind too, 
you know he could be i mean this guy you know he's a, he's a little cooker in the kitchen you know like he he's yeah well, he's gonna pull up with some ban shenanigans or something but he could be specs he could be a bunch of stuff i think i think it, the psychic coverage in general very strong um and they does not have a great switch in to that so i think that's something to to, to evaluate um yeah i think bundles obviously very strong I'm very really depressed that I see him Malamar Terra and not Bastion Terra because Bastion would six all this guy, uh, no cap. I mean, maybe it still can. Like I, I, I would have to look at the math on like what you need to live close combats, but um, and stuff. But it could be interesting. Um, I think Scuff Delfox is a similar vein to Melawada, just drawn hitter, good sidekick offense shenanigans. I think all that pretty cool. Um. Yeah, I mean, I think I think the biggest concern for him, for sure, is going to be, like um, previously mentioned, would be Sailor Age. But we have Landorus, the best Pokemon in the game. So, to be honest, it's probably navigatable. Like, for example, if he is no item Dragauji, uh, that guy just walls him. He just sits on his forehead the whole game. So, you know, th I think there's absolutely some... some some tech that that mr emboss can cook up and uh he he does love to cook so like the thing is i think like, this could be actually a pretty a much closer game than like it looks on paper i think yeah i mean obviously vancouver has the in, on pure paper the pokemon right like they're crazy strong but i think moochin could definitely cook something to make this closer uh than people expect i think greninja also i forgot to mention it is pretty decent this game um another pokemon that dragology would have to answer to uh because uh the water move is kind of nice into this team uh because uh, i don't know if suicune is going to be coming i don't know it it, it would be interesting if suicune can well, i think i think suicune could come because i believe poltergeist is what eight pp because i get hooked when i play mega Bena and i get anyway Different problem, but I think it's APP, so I'm pretty sure Suicune can, like, kind of just sit on its forehead uh, and, like, set up on it and just PP stall out the, the, the stuff, so it'd have to be Terra Grass. But if, I think as soon as that thing turns into a, terror, a Grass type, that mom becomes a lot worse, just, like, defensively, obviously. So yeah. I, think, I think it could come. The only thing I'm worried about Suicune is, like, obviously, is there any move Suicune has that could even touch Lantern? Uh, extra sensory, not, yeah. Extra sensory, <laughs> actually true. True. I I would just be worried that Lantern would like hard, absolutely yeah. like sure. stone you. I mean, absolutely, absolutely. It for sure could happen, but but yeah, it's a, it's an interesting game for sure. I think I'm still leaning Valiance after saying all that. Probably like fifty five again, like ever so slightly. Yeah. Okay. What do you I'll, think? I'll. I'll... I mean, I, I can see arguments for both. I'll, I'll make it interesting because you know, I, I'm him. So I, I'll, I'll, I'll take Mister Mister Kurthwack. I'll, I'll take it for whatever, fifty five, fifty three, whatever, whatever low percent it is. I'll tell you. Yeah. Take, and we we never even mentioned it actually, so I'll say it here. Uh, as elf, I'm recognizing the dark types are uh, Malamar and Amor Pico. I think Azelf is pretty good <laughs> this game against the two fightings. Uh, it, it it has the coverage to like mess up like conk and like it, like conk gets psychic moved dragology gets like psy shocked so does Lilligant, and then it ice beams uh lando and it, it, i think it has a fighting move for bastion too and like it could shadow ball like, it, it, obviously only four moves but i think uh azelf could uh, do something here as well for sure um so offensively i think valiance obviously has some stuff uh he can do it just comes down to finding some like minimal checks to the guys that Embors are gonna bring out. Yeah, with that, we will move on to the next game. Also, just quick food for thought. Like Abbotsford said, uh, Kurth is a, a little bit of, of of like a Remy in the kitchen. So for Suicune, a uh, Trailblaze and Mirror Coat, two moves that that, 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 could, that would fry it. Actually, come. wait, wait, Mirror <laughs> actually would fry it though. I like it. I yeah, like it. So. There's food for okay. thought. Moving on. I like it. Oh, here you go, Abbotsford. Alright. What the fuck? We got this? the Luscious Low Ponies versus the Abbotsford Agrons, where we are going to witness the Luscious Low Ponies absolutely obliterate the Abbotsford Agrons in 6 0 fashion. That is crazy. 
damn. No, I'm just kidding. So this game's pretty interesting. Uh, in the fact, so it's Spectrier and uh, Sneasler and uh, Samurai Hisui. So uh, the first thing you got to look at is the hazard control for low punnies. They do have one in Treads. I think Treads is pretty important this game because Agrons has, you know, a decent weakness to ground and it's also the removal for the Samurai Hisui team. So Treads is really trying to do a lot. It's trying to be offensive and uh, support. Uh, I don't know if it's going to get overwhelmed trying to do both, maybe. Um, I will say, I think Latios is pretty decent this match, actually looking at it, you know, with... Uh, I would be Luster Purge, and I would be Earthquake. I would be mixed, uh, Latios, if you could be. Or uh, Dragon Dance and Headbutt works as well, I think. I think that uh, works decently well, but obviously Quags are kind of unaware, so I think like just being special but also having Earthquake is probably the best way you can go about it, in my opinion. Um, Porygon 2 is obviously here. That's a pretty decent spec check. Uh, I imagine Spectre can also kind of take advantage of Porygon 2's passivity, though, maybe with, like, sub-calm mind so that uh, Shadow Balls don't break the sub. I think that would probably take two calm minds, two or three. Um, Fez is obviously annoying. It's going to have the poison moves uh, to toxic everything, and Clefable doesn't really want to take the poison moves, so its Magic Guard is kind of, you know, uh, useless there. So I imagine Weezing's to switch in, but... Uh, I have to imagine Weezing's coming this game for Sneasler and for um, uh, Pheasantipity. Uh, I think that's probably a pretty pretty likely occurrence, because if it's also ma uh, max defense, it probably takes a hit from Samurai Hisui as well and could potentially burn it. Um, Glass Drear, maybe if it can get under Trick Room, could be kind of dangerous with uh, ground coverage plus ice coverage. Uh, that kind of, uh, you know... Does a pretty good job. Quagsire probably has to take on that role to take that thing on. Uh, I don't know if Blaziken gets like Grass Knot. I think like a maybe a special Blaziken with like Focus Blast and Grass Knot. It gets or, Solar uh, Beam. Yeah, well, I wouldn't run Solar Beam. I, mean, I guess it's gonna be Mental Herb, Solar Beam. Um, Power Herb. Power Herb, whatever. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm him. Um, so, Abbotsford, you are uh, under no contract to talk about this game. No, I, don't I, 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 I understand how this works. I, 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 don't worry. You know, Ben, Ben does enough talking. Don't worry about that. Whenever, whenever he figures it out. Oh, you're not going to talk about it, though. No, I mean, well, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, I can talk about like, I mean, I could talk about her draft in general. Like, I, I think the troll is uh, pretty decent this match as long as it's U-turn. Volt switch is very troll. Uh, but you can spam Hurricane. He'd have to go to uh, Heatran. And obviously Heatran probably doesn't love taking the... Uh, what's it called? The Thunderbolts. In fact, I might be a uh, Terra Electric Killer. I don't know if uh, Galshir needs the Terra necessarily. Uh, maybe Terra Ghost if you want to keep your hazards up. But uh, in, in front of Cyclozar. Uh, but I don't even think Mary has like super amazing hazards to begin with. Uh, she her only spiker is spy dops and her rockers are treads and clefable. Um, so I imagine Agrons isn't super worried about hazards this game one way or the other. So I think like the big threats, obviously treads can spam earthquake for a bit. I wouldn't be surprised if treads is the lead. It's a pretty good lead, and you know it can just earthquake a lot. But uh, on Mary's side. Uh, to get rid of hazards, she needs to keep the treads around for sure. I think treads is very important to keep around. I think Latios, again, can be a big threat because the dark type is Samurott, who will probably die to Draco, and then you can Luster Purge everything but Heatran, and Heatran can take an Earthquake. Probably Expert Belt. Expert Belt, those three moves, and a flip turn. I don't hate that. Obviously, you know, Sneasler outspeeds, and so does Cyclozar and Spectrier. But uh, I don't I don't hate that at all. You could even be Scarf, maybe, if you want to outspeed all those guys. I don't, I don't despise that uh, angle of things. Um, other than that, yeah, I, I think uh, Sneasler, very, very problematic for Mary. Uh, Weezing is going to have to take it on, and Weezing also has to be like a Fez answer, kind of, so that everything doesn't get really whittled down. Uh, so that could be kind of annoying, and Weezing's probably also the physical wall for uh, Samurai Hisui, unless you want Clefable to take those hits, but I don't know if it'll take them very well. Um, Trap Inch could potentially... Trap in the treads, maybe, and then wow. you. I love having you working on that one. Sorry, <laughs> that was crazy. You just like actually just pulled a full dad joke, and no one said anything about that. That was crazy. The, the trap inch could trap in the treads, and <laughs> yeah, uh, did it again. 
and it, it would have a focus sash, uh, and maybe that could work. Maybe if you think it's going to lead, you could just lead it. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. Uh, Arbaliva could be pretty important in this game to get a grassy terrain up and make it so uh, ground isn't so important. The cool thing about having Arbaliva, though, is uh, you know they're going to run Stomping Tantrum, which is slightly weaker, so that's nice, and it can miss. So, you know, that's cool for you. You can miss um, Stomping Tantrum. It, I thought it was 95, but maybe no, I'm wrong. No, it's 95 power. But... Uh, okay, then no, you can't miss Stomping Tantrum. <laughs> stomping Tantrum is 75 power, 100% accurate. Oh, it's only 75. Oh, high horsepower. We're both high talking about high horsepower. High horsepower can miss. That's okay, so we're, miss. We're, we're both dog shit. Yeah, we're both talking about high horsepower. <laughs> we're talking about high horsepower, and high horsepower That's can miss. Way. I know that for a fact. Um, <clears throat> but they're all going to run high horsepower. Uh, Spide Ops, I mean, maybe it comes. It resists fighting, so that's cool for Sneasler. Maybe a circle throws out the swords and then Sneasler or something. Um... Yeah, I mean it's a it's a pretty close one. I I think like you know Spectrier, uh, maybe it could be like a scarf Spectrier and you trick the Porygon too. Hmm? That could be cool. Um, I I do think with Porygon two here, it's obviously going to be annoying for Spectrier to do anything. So you have to find a way to beat that. Uh, maybe you trap it in with a Magma Storm or something, or maybe you Sacred Sword it with Samurott, because I imagine it's not going to be uh, Sneasler, because Sneasler's probably going to try and clean up the game, I have to guess. That's usually its role. Uh, Espeon is pretty good here, because they don't have a Dark type. I'll say that. Uh, so there's Latios and uh, Iron Treads, but uh, those guys, you don't really want to take the chip, I imagine, so it can kind of just spam Psychic. Or side shock, whatever psychic move it has, it can just spam it over and over, and Lopunis has to find a way to deal with it. Um, so I think that could be a good move for Agrons. Uh, overall, I think I'm gonna lean Agrons, and that's not just because he's here. Hopefully, pray. No, you're the biggest hater, bro. It's cool, bro. No problem. Uh, I'll, I'll lean Agrons. I'll go 55-45 in Agrons' favor. Okay. Well, it was quite impressive that you just completely soloed that. Uh, what I would say is, I think, she, like, just in general, her draft, I think it looks scarier than it is. Like, Blaziken, especially as we saw from last season, is, like, a pretty fake mon. It's, like, whatever. But right? Azumarill does two things. Like, it, the whole Treads, Laddie, Paraglaston, the Fable, like, the first four mons, you're like, oh, shit, maybe I'll get cooked. And then when you start doing the math and looking at stuff, you're like, well, you know, you know, the math's not mathing. Um, I mean, anyone can see that, like, if your poison type is a wheezing, then, you know, maybe T-Spikes are good against you. Maybe not. We'll find out. Um, but yeah, I, I, th I think she has very specific mons to do very specific things with no flexibility. Very rigid mons, like wheezing and Poison 2, that, like, obviously kind of have to come to this game. Um, if they don't come, then, you know, so clicking Shadow Ball has never been easier. So I, I think she has inflexible mons, very rigid mons. Uh, and that kind of apl also applies to Kilowatch Uh The problem is that Kilowatch Roll hits like an absolute chuck. So that will be fun to try to figure out. Um, but I, th I think I think it's very interesting. But it's uh, every time, every every single game, no matter what, if it's about maybe, like it just comes down to she, how she plays. And that's like how she builds too. So there you go. All right. Well, with that we'll move on to the next team. Oh, and that last game was game of the week, by the way. I'm pretty sure. So I'll just see it that. was PBO game of the week. <laughs> that was for that ground versus the Lapanese. <laughs> All right. Someone is. <laughs> and this game is the Tennessee Tyranitars versus the Norwalk Noiverns. Okay, so this is kind of an interesting one. Um, I think that, you know, the Tyranitars have a pretty decent matchup here. I think Okie Dogi, you know, can do some stuff. If it Terra, you know, darks, uh, it can knock some guys off. It can also click some gunk shots, do some damage all around, which is really nice. I think Terrapagos is really nice here. Uh, you can fire off those uh, 
star storms and they're going to do a pretty big chunk and you're going to have earth power probably to hit the likes of uh, Avalug, Preterra, and Jirachi. Um, Meowth Skirata has a pretty okay matchup here. You know, you can triple axel some stuff. You got Flower Trick for Primarina. Iron Hands actually does look pretty problematic. You probably need like a defensive Mew, I imagine, for this Iron Hands because you don't really have a great answer for it otherwise. It kind of just gets free reign to click moves on you with like Ice Punch, Thunder Punch, and Drain Punch. Uh, you can kind of just click them, and there's really not much you can do. Um, especially if it's AV, it can come in on like Terrapagos or Thunderous and start uh, going ham if it wants. A, a lot of like uh, passive guys on Norwalk's side, like uh, Frostmoth or uh, Sinistra, or not passive, but like guys who set up moves, like Comfey or Sinistra, or like Claude Sire with hazards and stuff, uh, Tinkaton can uh, encore those guys and then get it into a situation where uh, Tyranitars can position himself uh, well because of the encore. Uh, I think Dragonite, you know, Earthquake Dragonite has a pretty okay matchup here. Obviously, you know, there's the uh, Terra uh, Fairy Avalog that could be very annoying uh, if it goes Terra Fairy. And there's the Comfey, so you always got to be worried about that draining kiss. But, um,. And Primarina's here as well. Uh, I think, like, on Norwalk's side, like I said, Iron Hands is really good here. I think Sinistra, if the Tinkaton is dead or you call that it's not going to come in immediately, Sinistra could do something. I wouldn't be surprised at all if it did, especially if it could get, like... Because you can Strength Sap the Dragonite and the Okie Dogi. And if you get, like, a, not immediate Terra Steel, but if you Terra Steel later and then Terrapagos is out, and but you've already got, like, one Calm Mind and it doesn't do enough and you Macha Gacha, and then you obviously you Strength Sap the Miascarada. Like, there's a way where Sinistra can sweep this. I think that's, like, your best win con. To win this game is break with hands and then sweep with Sinistra, which is probably what we're going to be saying a lot for the Norwalk Noiverns. Uh, Primarina has an okay matchup, uh, if uh, I'm pretty sure. He, it can, like, flip turn. But it's, it's going to lose to, like, Miascarada, and it's going to lose to Okie Doki, and it's probably going to lose to Thunderous. Um, I think Tennessee has a Rotom Wash that's not on the board, um, if I'm remembering correctly. I'll double check. Hold on. Just, you can keep on going, though. And if he has a Rotom Wash, a defensive Rotom Wash is pretty good here, because I don't think he's going to bring Water Absorb Claude Zire. I think he's going to bring Unaware for Terrapagos and Dragonite, maybe. Um, so if that Rotom Wash comes, it could be like, you know, a Will-O-Whisper for Hands, and like it can Hydro, uh, Incineroar, maybe it could be the Rocky Helmet Mon, so that you don't get swept by a Scarf uh, Jirachi. Because I could see like Scarf Jirachi just clicking Iron Head over and over, and like the only real way to stop that is to have a Rocky Helmet Mon, so it eventually kills itself. Unless you just want to, you know, play with luck or have um, your, like, Okie Dogi be Scar... Uh, but be Scar oh, Scarf Okie Dogi wouldn't even kill. You'd have to go Thunderous and click T-Wave and then go to your Okie Dogi probably is what the, you would have to do. Which isn't, like, terrible or anything. But it's just very annoying. Um, yeah, I'm definitely feeling like I'm leaning towards the Tyranitars. What do you think, uh, Nightmare? I think... Um... Let me see. Okay, let's actually on my screen now. Um, I think um, it's probably I, I would agree. I I think like Terrapagos is Terrapagos, so there's a lot of flexibility in that regard. Um, but I think once that set is I guess solved or like exposed, um, in the battle, then like there should be quite. I think this should, there should be some actions or some counterplay. Events. I think Sinister can like kind of just sit on it if it's not toxic. So if it's offensive, that I think Sinister maybe has some you know has some potential with Calm Mind shenanigans. I think uh, like you said, Terra Avalok in general like just kind of tucks all of the physical attackers. Um, which I don't know why the Grookey is Fire Water Grass Electric. I don't see the vision, but maybe. Um. Yeah, I think that's I think that's all pretty true. I kind of think mouse hold can go hard in the paint. I'll be honest. I think, I'm, but I'm like the biggest mouse hold of, like fan ever. I think mouse hold is like hard. One, ready up, and then like you insta break the terra shell into like collapse some cheeks. Plus you get low kick. It's nice. I um, will say, um, the way terra shell works is all of the hits count as the thing, oh, and they'll all be resisted. Oh, that's so cringe. 
I've seen that it before with double so iron bash on Melmetal. That is so cringe. But it does not work like that versus Yeah, Dragonite it will break. That is very cringe. I didn't know that. Well, the more you know. But you also get yeah. Encore and stuff on Mr. Mouse. Yeah, it's not bad. If it was Terra normal, I would say bring it because he doesn't yeah, have a ghost other than Bunch Lex. But because uh, it's not, I think it's just like whatever. I don't think it's strong enough. Like it maybe it'll do something, but it dies really fast. Well, yeah, it's an offensive yeah. mon. It's not yeah. gonna take any hit. But yeah, well, actually, in a lot of draft, it's a support mon usually. It's yeah, like but a freaking... it's so offensive. Yeah, no, no one's running any investment on any defensives that are mouth. You mouth. could be a uh, super fang. I don't hate super fang. Super fang to Tarapago, yeah. Super fang to Dragonite. I don't hate that. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, it could work. Uh, I think I think Claude in general will come. Claude will be good. Um, I think Josh is criminally underrated. I don't think it's magically gonna like. I mean, you could be like Call Mind or something, maybe, and maybe it's good, but I think overall it's probably into, it should be in Tennessee's favor. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's it's gonna be Hands, it's gonna be Sinistra, I think. I think it's gonna be Jirachi, Prim, Claude, and then like one sixth guy, I have no clue who. And then I think like. You can tell every week who Tyranitar is going to bring. He's got like eight real Pokemon, right? So, Tarapagos, uh, Meowskarada, Okidogi. I think Dragonite's going to come. I think Mew's going to come. And I would bet on, uh, I don't know, maybe Tink. I think Tink is pretty good here just because of Encore. Yeah, I mean, Tink, like, especially like, you know, the Orange Classic, the Air Balloon Tink, obviously Wolves, like, I would be um, very scared to bring Thunderous here. I feel like he has, like, many Thunderous checks. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I would go 60-40 in favor of the Tyranitars. Yeah, I, I think I, 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 it's for sure in his favor. I, I think it should be a pretty easy game to just overwhelm the opponent. Yeah, just overwhelm with Dragonite and Terrapagos and maybe clean at the end with Meowskarada. Or maybe break with Meowskarada and clean at the end with Dragonite is probably the correct order of doing things. Uh, just be cautious of the Avalug, I would say, because I think you're going to end up bringing like four physical attackers and none of them can be Avalug, so you're going to have to keep Terrapagos around for Avalug or you will lose to it. That's my guess. Um, and with that, we will move on. I think this is the last game that we have. It's the Worcester Whoopers versus the Crown Point Titans. Um, this is a very, very interesting game. Uh, the first thing I think in this game is that Satitan, if it gets into the snow, it, uh, crushes because it's Terra Electric, so Skarmory is not a real check. If you get like Stealth Rocks up with like Diancy maybe, and then to break it sturdy, um, they, I, I think. Terra Electric uh, Satitan just dominates. Uh, it, it kills every single Pokemon. Uh, there isn't a real check, but Whoopers can counteract potentially with like a Sticky Web or like Boots, Sturdy, Skarm, Counter uh, could work. Those are like the checks he has. Uh, they're not great ones, but he has them. Uh, I will say, you know. There could be some angle, some some trick room angle from uh, Sir Titans as well. Uh, Blood Moon or not Blood Moon, regular Ursaluna does get Fire Punch, so Skarm isn't like a perma answer. Um, if he doesn't run Fire Punch, it's obviously a very very good one. But I have to assume he's going to be running Fire Punch. Uh, I think like uh, Diancy is okay this match, but like, uh, the likes of Araquanid, in my opinion, I think Araquanid's for sure coming. I think it's very good, and getting sticky webs up is very good. Uh, Roaring Moon, uh, you're gonna need to be, like, max defense Mandibuzz, or else this Roaring Moon could overwhelm you, because it's gonna be, uh, I mean, you're gonna want to tear your Titan, and it's gonna be Iron Head, so Diancy isn't gonna be able to check it. It's gonna be, like, a, a maybe a substitute Dragon Dance Iron Moon with, a. Uh, Iron Head and probably Knock Off is the last move. So, uh, Mandibuzz is gonna have to try and handle that and hopefully not get flinched by some Iron Heads. Moth has a pretty bad matchup. Glow King is, like, one of the best Moth counters. Uh, it, it, Fiery Dance does very, very little. You have to be Specs and get the boost, and then maybe you can two-hit, maybe, if it's not Max Spideff. Uh, it probably will be. Max Spideff. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if it's an AV uh, Glow King with a Poison Boo for the Enam. 
Psychic Psy Shock for the Moth. Uh, some Fire Move for the Magnezone, even though the Magnezone's going to Terra, but once it Terra's, then you can hit it with the Psychic Move for Neutral, and the Magnezone's not going to be able to do any damage to the AV guy. And then, like, a fu and then like the Fire Move can also hit Skarmory, though. And then probably, like, a... Uh, Ice Beam, maybe. I don't know. The last move, it doesn't matter. Uh, Ice Beam hits Dawn Fan. It hits Moon if you live a Moon hit. Because you're AV, you could have some defense, maybe. Uh, oh, wait, you can't be AV if you're going to Chili, though. So uh, probably just Max Spideff and just uh, for the for the Moth. Glad I caught myself on that. Um, I mean, he's going to bring Dawn Fan Whoopers because Titans is going to try and set up a bunch of spikes, I imagine. He's got what now? One, two, three spikers. Three different guys who are going to try and set up spikes. Kind of crazy. Um, but his removal it, itself is Bramblegast and uh, Mandibuzz. So, uh, like I said, webs could be very, very viable. I would just be worried about Ursa Luna under webs. I feel like if he catches the Skarmory with the Fire Punch, it could be very problematic. Zoroark, Hisui, it's like okay. But I think Moon will probably be able to handle it. And probably Enam too, if I'm being honest. Um, I don't know. What do you think, Nightmare Hole? Um, yeah. I mean, I said I didn't obviously is like strong. I think. I think the biggest struggle that the Titans will have will be their limited hazard removal. Considering, like you said, they have a copious amount of spikes, um, and hazards that they want to get up. So I think defogging them all the way will feel like complete trash so that's not the goal uh then his spinner is relatively um predictable or very easy to interact with um again i mean i don't know how good bane is rob but like a spin block is a spin block and you kind of go from there could work i think moon in general is pretty strong i mean obviously there's aloe but this is not that deck so there's no toxic aloe mola it's just play off aloe mola but that should be pretty, like, Bandit is, like, pretty easy to navigate. It's just a bunch of U-turn spam. Webs is, is really good. Um, try to, like, stack that speed boosting from Slush Rush. It's pretty nice. Um, if he's shiced with it, if he's shiced with it, he pulls up with the Ice Cube, just because I would love to see him try to counter hail with Ice Cube. Oh, yeah, the Chili fun. Reception. And you get... Oh, that could actually be a decent Titan answer. Because oh, you, it, you get your yeah, thing yeah. back. Yeah, it's also a decent... Ursaluna. Then yeah. too. Yeah, I, so, I used to actually have some yeah. value this game. I I, 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 I think you should bring it. I think that's actually a pretty good I idea. Think, I think Magnazone is also very good because trapping Klefki, value, um, and then punishing Alamomola, value. I have um, no clue what Terra he's going to bring. He's got some pretty whack Terras. I, 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 wish... I, don't, I don't think he needs to be Terra Magnazone. He should be Terra yeah. Mesprit. He should be Terra Ghost Mesprit, so he's a switch into fucking Ursaluna. Yeah, uh, I don't, yeah, I kind of like that. I think I think all the terrors. I guess it is. Yeah, it's levitate and ghost, so it'll be double immune. Yeah, probably that. That is actually the right play. You're right. And then, I think like Mian Shao knock value is pretty high, um, which is nice. And then like rocks value goes up, and that, that's the goal you want to do because then you beat Mandibuzz, and then all this stuff gets very easily overwhelmed. So like the first two mons on his roster here should be able to get the job done. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think, I think it's a little bit more finicky and a little bit more gimmicky for, for Whoopers to like, you know, set up the conditions, set up the hazards, try to play, um, his game. Where like, I think the Titans is lead with Mon, <laughs> quick momentum move, go into breaker. Um, yeah, I think if Satitan doesn't win, it's going to be very hard for Satitans to win, but I think Satitan has a very good chance of winning. You know what I mean? So it's yep. like, um... I, I, I don't know fully how it will go. I'm going to lean to Titan. I'm going to go probably 60-40, maybe 55-45 in to Titan's favor. What yeah. are you thinking? Yeah, I, I like I like yeah, the 55. You're know, on the lower ends of 50s for sure for this. Yeah, sure. low, low 50s. It's hard to scope. We got a lot of 55-45s this week just because we're scoping out everyone, trying to figure out how, they, how good they are with these teams. Um, I, I definitely feel... 
somewhat comfortable going with that. But Whoopers definitely does have some good plays. That Ghost Mesprit is a good idea for sure. I think Magnazone is good. I think Moon is good. Moth, I don't know. We'll see. I, I just, I, I've used Gloaking into Moth, and it just feels so free to go Gloaking every time. Um... Garm, I think, has to come, even though it's not great. But it is a Terra Electric Titan. So maybe instead of Skarm, you bring Ice Q. That's a really risky play, but maybe you do it. Because he literally can't hit you. Because he hits you, and then you get it right back. Um, does Ice Q get, like, Roar or something? I don't think so. Because it doesn't even have to be, like, an offensive Ice Q. It could just be utility, like, defensive. Let me look up Ice Q. Uh, it gets Reflect. You could do that. It gets Head Smash. Uh, but it doesn't really get anything. That was not. That was not helpful at all. <laughs> Does it get Roar? It gets Head Smash. Yeah, it, it doesn't really get like... anything. You, you could be a Roar Veil. Uh. Yeah, it, 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 I think Aurora Veil is your best bet. And then... Because you, you, you don't actually get, like, Aurora Veil and then just hit it with Icicle, sm speed, Icicle Crash because it'll be Terrid. So no, be no, no, it'll be fine, yeah. It's or Reversal, fine. actually. Uh, but you won't have any low HP because you're going to be... Yeah, I actually don't know what the Ice Q does back necessarily, but I do like the idea of Ice Q. Um, all right. I think with that, we are going to uh, call it. I think that's the end, right? There's no one left? I see it. All right. And with that, I appreciate everyone for watching. This has been Week 1 Pick'ems. We'll see what our records are after the first week. Uh, peace.